This is the F91W. This is a pressure tank and I have some water here. What we're gonna do is a water test on the F91W because it says it's water resistant. It says it's water resistant to 30 meters. But what I'm interested in is whether or not Casio is actually over delivering on their promise. I actually did this test before on a different Casio, a metal bracelet version. You can find that in the description below and also up above. In that video, I actually pushed the pressure machine beyond what it could actually do and I broke the gauge on it. But what I'm looking for is to figure out whether or not watch claims about a 30 meter water resistance is a bit overblown. Now, let's unbox the watch so that you know that this is a Casio F91W. I bought this on Amazon. I paid, I think like 10 or $11. I'd have to look. This is one of the few watches where the price hasn't changed over time. You know, the price is what it is and has been for a very, very long time. And it's been popular for so long because it serves a great purpose. If you just want to tell the time and you want the least expensive way to do it on your wrist, this is one of the best ways to do that. So it's a great watch. And I think that it might be even better than you originally expect. Now, the other thing to note here is water resistance in watches before we do the test. One of the things to know about water resistance in watches, there's two different certifications that a watch can go through. And that is important to note. One is ISO 6425, and that is for diver's watch. If you see like on this Seiko turtle here where it says divers 200 meters or divers 200, that means that it's past ISO 6425. If it doesn't say divers, divers 200 on there, then you know that it did not go through the 6425 ISO certification. That is specific to scuba diving. Now there's more information there than just water resistance. It also has to do with indice layout, legibility, bezel layout, uh, markings across the bezel and on the minute track. All that goes into ISO 6425. Now I can't share with you the actual document that ISO provides because they sell it. They're a certification committee that makes money on testing the watches and makes money selling written out versions of their certification. Now I purchased them, so I have read both 6425 and this other one. This other one is ISO 22810. And 22810 basically states if you sell a watch and you state a water resistance, you need to back that up. And that's because if you watch the watch industry videos where they say water resistant to 30 meters, in the 80s, that meant it's basically splash resistant. It's not really resistant to 30 meters. And that is confusing to people. And that is why this international standard started with ISO, where when you say 30 meters, you need to mean 30 meters of water resistance. All that stuff is important to note. So what do I mean by that? What does ISO 22810 really mean? When this watch right here, this Speedmaster says 50 meters of water resistance, they mean 50 meters of water resistance. There's actually examples of Omega responding to people where they asked whether or not this watch itself could be worn on my wrist and swum at a depth of 50 meters, would the watch still be fine? The answer is yes. Now, whether or not you're too afraid to do that, that's a totally other thing, but to be set in our idea that this really doesn't mean 50 meters, you can shower with it maybe, but you can't swim with it yet until it's 100 meters, I think is very outdated and not correct on modern watches. Now this right here is a PADI open water certification card. This is my scuba certification card. I am open water certified and I have done a decent amount of diving, not a huge amount, but a decent amount. My limit for open water diving, for standard recreational diving is 18 meters or 60 feet. And I can tell you from experience that 60 feet is a lot deeper than you really think that it is. It is a decent amount, 60 feet underwater. You have no feeling of currents over you anymore. It's pure stillness. You lose almost all color. If you go to the advanced recreational depth, you're talking about 30 meters and that's a hundred feet. And that's the limit for most people. But it's also important to note what you'll be able to see down there. Most people imagine scuba diving around coral reefs, but the wavelength of light means that you can't see colors past a certain depth. Red drops off at 15 feet. You can't see any red anymore. Orange at 25, yellow at 35, and green finally at 65 feet. So if you're an advanced recreational diver, you're only in blue water. There's no other color. There's nothing else to see. It gets really dark. You also have to know a lot more about advanced safety stops and whatnot. The important thing to note is this Omega Speedmaster right here that has 50 meters of water resistance while you're swimming could easily be a watch someone wore when they scuba dive. Now, whether or not you press the pushers is something else you should probably consider, but you don't need a 300 meter water resistant watch. You're dead, you're crushed before you even get close to that depth. 
So all of this stuff I think is very important to note before we do the test. I wanted to give some information on water resistance before I show you exactly how far this thing can go. Now, watch is working beforehand. I just pulled out of the box. It is 1245 on the watch right now. I'll even start a timer so that the timer can be running while it's underwater. All right, that took a little bit of doing, but I do have the watch in position. Everything is fine. I'm ready to start cranking down so you can watch. The pressure here is gonna start changing. Each of these numbers, if you see one here is one atmosphere, that's 10 meters. Two, two atmospheres, it's 20 meters. But you can watch as it changes, what's gonna happen. Now the watch, it's supposed to be rated for 30 meters of water resistance. So now it doesn't say that on the watch, it just says water resistant. Technically, they could probably get away with not having to have that amount of water resistance, but I bet you this is more water resistant than you think. Now, as of right now, we are at 20 meters. This is the same water pressure that I have gone at a, my lowest depth when I swam with sharks and did all this other stuff. This is as low as I have been. This is probably as low as I really wanna go. 40 meters, maybe eventually one day, but it doesn't matter. 20 meter water resistance is more than enough to do recreational scuba diving for most people. And obviously it's more than enough for snorkeling. Let's go up to an advanced certification of 40 meters. We're now at 40 meters of water resistance. So the watch is running. You can see the stopwatch is still going. There are no problems with the watch. Everything seems perfectly fine. So why would you say this is only splash resistant at 30 meters? This, I think, again, is the problem with watch enthusiast community, watch enthusiasts in general. I get it, you spend a lot of money on a watch. You want the best of the best, but most of it is marketing. If you're at this water resistance and it can handle this and it's got new gaskets, it's perfectly fine. You could swim, it doesn't matter. Now, here's where people say that's not necessarily true. When you move your arms, you change the pressure when you're underwater, and that isn't true. There's a difference between static and dynamic pressure. Now, when you're swimming on the surface, sure, you're gonna have slightly more pressure than you would swimming under the water where you're again moving your arms because you're gonna have the difference between air and water. And that pressure change will be some sort of depth. And the watch will not be undergoing more than that just because you're moving your arm, even if you're flailing. Now I know people, I actually know other divers that wear standard Casio watches with 30 meters water resistance that dive. It doesn't, they know that the watch is gonna be fine because they've done it for a very long time. Their backup watch doesn't have to be a 200 meter water resistant watch like a Seiko Turtle. It's cool, it's fun to think that it could go to that depth, but it's unnecessary. It doesn't need to be at that depth. This 300 meter water resistant Submariner is something I'll never use. Your daily driver doesn't have to have 100 meters of water resistance in order to be worn in the rain and in the office. It just doesn't. 30 meters obviously is fine. 50, if you're really careful or scared, is more than enough. This right here is an example. This is a $12 watch. And it's currently at a 40 meter water resistance, clearly, because it's just sitting here running a stopwatch with no problems. Now I'm gonna max this out at 60 meters and see if there's any change. Now 60 meters of water resistance is beyond advanced recreational divers. You're a professional diver at this point. And so it's very unlikely that anyone really is gonna be going to this depth unless they know what they're doing and very clearly know what they're doing. That is 60 meters of water resistance, 60 meters of pressure on this Casio F91W. And as I expected, it's doing just fine. Can you scuba dive with this watch? Definitely, clearly, definitely you can scuba dive with this watch. Would you want to? I don't see why not. If you ever did end up smashing it against a rock, you could just replace it and it's very inexpensive to do so. Is this still a good daily driver because now you can swim with it, you can wear it doing anything? Definitely, wash your hands, swim, snorkel, whatever you're gonna do, the watch will be perfectly fine and it's 12 bucks. So this is just a little small PSA to those people. I want to do a small experiment and I want to give you some information. This has been Harrison. This has been a fun test. If you like this stuff, please subscribe. I'll be doing more depth tests. I have a moon swatch coming up and obviously other reviews. I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Now, most people now would say, well, whoa, is the watch still going to operate? Is it still going to work just fine when I get it out of the tank?
You tell me that that's not working. Washes perfectly fine. No cracks in the crystal, no cracks in the glass, no distortion, no nothing. <sighs> Stop it. Reset. <laughs>